Welcome everyone to the third episode of Marxism Today. Today's topic will be about something called dialectics or the dialectic. The dialectic is an important part of Marxist theory. Last time in episode two we talked about materialism. You may have heard the term dialectical materialism if you've studied Marx before or maybe had a class that mentioned him. Uh, dialectical materialism is a combination of these two philosophical ideas, materialism and dialectics, and uh, Marx is largely seen as the person who put them together for the first time. When we use Marxist theory, we're going to, just like Marx, combine these two ideas to work together to understand the world. So what is the dialectic? The simplest formula for it goes as follows. There's three parts. The first part is a thesis. And the thesis just means the way something is done now or the belief that most people have now. Basically, it's the status quo. It's how things are now. And the dialectic says that the society will at some point present an antithesis. The antithesis is a reaction to the thesis. It's something that sees the world in a completely different way. It's a new idea, a new process, something that in some way challenges the thesis or the old idea, challenges the status quo. These two elements struggle together, and what you're left with is the third part, which is called the synthesis. The synthesis usually is seen as combining parts from both the thesis and the antithesis. So it's not so much that the antithesis is going to immediately replace the thesis, but that the struggle between the two creates a, th a synthesis. The trick to this is that it doesn't end there, that this model is always moving. So the synthesis becomes the new thesis. And then a new struggle occurs when another antithesis is presented. So there's a reaction to the newly established status quo. That struggle happens and there's a new synthesis. So let's look at some examples of how to put this together. One example is a mother and a son talking. Okay, so this will, this will be a family-based example. You may have gone through something like this yourself. So, the mother tells the son, you need to be home by 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock is when I want the car back. It's when I want to see you here. I don't want you out on the road late at night. The son says to the mom, uh, but mother, I am 16, 17, 18 years old now. I think that I should be able to stay out till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and be able to take the car wherever I want. And there's a struggle between the two. So the thesis is the established rule at the beginning, the bedtime or curfew, whatever it is. And the antithesis is the new proposed curfew, the new rules proposed by the son. While the two of them will engage in a dialogue, which could take the form of a struggle, uh, verbal struggle most likely, and chances are you'll end up with some sort of synthesis, some middle ground between the two. The outcome is likely not to be exactly the old way or exactly the new way, or perhaps the struggle isn't done yet. Children throughout their lives sometimes engage in this struggle over and over again, where there's an established thesis, they challenge it with wanting more responsibility and more freedom, and that's uh, they end up with a new synthesis, and then they challenge that again, uh, slowly gaining more and more 
responsibility as they grow up. That would be one example of a dialectic. I'm going to give a larger, more political example now, but I'll use something perhaps not that controversial, the American Revolution. Before the Revolution, the thesis is America is a colony ruled by the British. The antithesis is we, the American colonies, wish to be our own nation independent of England. In this struggle, the antithesis is presented many different times. This isn't a history lesson, so I won't go over every time. But here are a few times that the antithesis was asserted. Uh, the Boston Tea Party would be a very familiar example. So the colonialists acting in the Boston Tea Party were doing an action that uh, act of disobedience that presented their case for independence. Okay, they were rebelling against the tea tax. From this struggle, from this presentation of the antithesis, there was a struggle then with the thesis and antithesis, and the synthesis in this case, after the Boston Tea Party, is that there are more people sympathetic to the cause, or more people more energized about the cause for American Revolution. So, it didn't cause the revolution just in that one act, but it was part of the dialectic that was constantly going on. It was a presentation of the antithesis, which led to the synthesis of more support for the cause. Again, later, during the course of the revolution, Thomas Paine published a pamphlet called Common Sense, which was sort of a logical argument for the independence of the American colonies. Did this pamphlet in and of itself cause the revolution? No, it was another presentation of the antithesis. So you can see in this example, the antithesis is asserted over and over again, always creating a new synthesis until a larger task has been accomplished. It's a philosophy that highlights the struggle between these two causes. It's a philosophy that highlights struggle. It's going to show that the changes in society are results of ideas and people that struggle against one another, or that uh, debate or engage in a dialogue. There's another way to look at the dialectic, um, and this way will be used in a lot of our lessons on Marx. And this is the idea of contradiction. Now, you might want to use a different word for contradiction. Contradiction is the traditional Marxist word to use, but um, you might want to use the word antagonism or dual quality, something like that. Some of the ways that we'll see contradiction in our Marxist analysis will be, for example, how commodities perform two different roles, how they have an exchange value and a use value. We'll get into that later. But only one of those values can be used. If you use it for one, you can't use it for the other. That's a contradiction. Okay? And that fits nicely into the idea of the dialectic because there will be this tension between these two ways to use it. Okay? Uh, in Marxist analysis, we'll see that in capitalism, many, many times, two opposing forces are brought together out of necessity, but they have different interests. They have different goals, and their goals are very oftentimes in conflict with one another. So a very simple example, if we look at any market, uh, you can see a certain contradiction or antagonism between buyers and sellers. If I'm buying something, I want to find the best price. I want to find the best deal out there. So I want the prices to be really, really low and the goods to be very, very good. If I'm a seller, I want to get the most money I can for my product. 
So I'm going to charge as much money as I possibly can. I want prices to be very, very high. Well, that's, again, a contradiction that is embodied in market exchange. So uh, there's always a dialectic between buyers and sellers. So I want to back up a little bit now and really look at the big ideas that we should get out of the dialectic. First, our world is matter in motion. In other words, things are always moving and always changing. There's constant struggle going on in society. There's many, many theses out there, and those are being challenged by antitheses. So, this creates a world where things are changing. The world we live in is a moving, changing world. It's full of struggle. Battles are constantly being fought and won, but those battles only lead to new battles. This is the model in combination with materialism that we'll use to interpret the world. So we're looking at real things in a real world, and we're looking at how they come into conflict with one another. So how real material interests of one person conflict with the real material interests of another. If you remember our lesson from materialism, you'll remember that we talked about how Marx's view of the material world in includes the social relation. So many times we'll be talking about how different social roles come into conflict with one another. The good example from earlier in this lesson was the social role of a buyer and a seller. There's no material thing that makes the body of a seller different than the body of a buyer. So these are just social roles that these two people are fulfilling. They could be exchanged at any time, and many times they are. It's sometimes in our life we're buyers, and other times we're sellers. But the struggle happens nonetheless. It's a struggle between the real material social relations. I have material goods that you want, and we have to work out some sort of deal that we can both agree on in the market. So in that example, you can see the embodiment of Marx's materialism and his dialectics and how they're going to inform the way that he looks at a situation. That's it for the dialectic. Tune in next time. I'll see you then.